suppose. I don't know, man. We'll see. I uh, I just think it's gonna be a bad year, and I think we're on the same page. I think they take a step back. And Spitzer Rattler not just going pro, I think was a was a mistake on. Rattler. Yeah, I just don't think there's there's like no way, so no conceivable way for them not to take a huge step back. It's just like Marshawn Bell or Marshawn Lloyd, Jaheim Bell, like those are the the two best playmakers on this offense. Like that's just it's unfortunate, but you know that is what it is. Ryan Day, Matt Green, is there any pressure? On Ryan Day, Brian Hartline promoted to OC, loses Kevin Wilson to coach at Tulsa, obviously losing in really, really rough fashion against Georgia, coming out a party for him, calling plays. This is what's weird. He said he's not calling plays next year. Like he's like turning like he's going to be more of a CEO type coach. So is Brian Hartline, who's like never call plays, calling plays for Ohio State next year? Like that's going to be really weird. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, I don't know. Like, I think Ryan Day, he's lost to Michigan twice in a row. If I'm Ohio State fan, I'm still pretty happy. Like, you should have beaten Georgia. Like, that was one of those where you're like, dude, that just hurt. Like, we, we they had They could have Georgia. beaten Georgia. Well, I, I'm saying, like, you were there. Like, you gave Georgia more than they could handle than anybody yeah. else all year long. It wasn't even close. Like, you were better than Georgia for the majority of that football game. You were that was your game like they lost that game like that was just that was rough but that's where i that's where i push back not that not to get hung up on that yeah. is it's like they didn't necessarily lose the game it's like was there like a huge mistake they made or anything it's like that kicker you saw that you see that kicker's career stats right yeah he's never made a 50 yarder his whole career it was a yeah. it was exactly 50 yards or 51 to, it's like that's outside his range you know yeah. so it's not like it was a chip shot like it was an awful attempt but like it was just it was a heavyweight uh fight for sure right. i just i think either team could have won for sure so you're a Ohio state fan you feel like you definitely could have won the game I, I feel you there yeah it's just one of those jobs like what we talked about with texas with sark just one of those jobs where it's like those fans have a right to be like Mm, you should be in the playoff and competing for one every year. We are also Ohio State. We don't lose to Michigan back-to-back -back years. Like, this is rare. Like, this is something you don't do. I think there's real pressure on him because it's, like, you cannot lose to Michigan three years in a row. Like, that is something you can't do. And Blake Corum's back. JJ McCarthy's back. Jim Harbaugh's back. I'm not saying he's on the hot seat going into the year, but, like, even with the new quarterback, it doesn't mean their expectations are going to end. Marvin Harrison Jr.'s back. Um, what's... Uh, Meg, oh, what is his name? Um, who was also the the slot guy? Who was actually a five star? Um, Ameka was it? Uh, Abuka. Abuka, yeah. Um, he's back. Jackson Smith and Jigba's gone, but like, I don't know. There's a bunch of talent in the backfield. Like they obviously we talked about their defensive end. Like they're gonna be a top three preseason team again. And Kyle McCord was a five star. He should step right in and be good. But like, that's the thing, man. Is I this is a job where he would not be on the hot seat in just about any other part of the country for how successful he's been. But giving up play calling, losing the way he did to Georgia, losing back-to-back -back years to Michigan, I think he has like he has to be better, which is crazy, but that's the job. That's, that's the job at Ohio State. I think it's fair to say his seat's going to be very warm and he's going to have a very stressful year in Columbus. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. You said it like it's the standards at Ohio State. Like he's he might be one of the best coach coaches in college football, but mm -hmm. the, the standard at Ohio State is just very different than almost every other job in the country. So that that's what it comes down to, because like you you look at I, I put this at a four. Mm -hmm. And honestly, without the Georgia game being what it was like, if, if Georgia beat them by two touchdowns, I think it probably could be a five in like a game that like wasn't as mm -hmm. competitive because you know, you could make an argument Ohio State didn't really earn being in the college ball playoff last year. It's kind of mm -hmm. their reputation. Like, you know, they, they weren't super – like, they only lost the one game, of course. But it's like it wasn't a tough schedule. Like, they beat Penn State, and that was just – that was pretty much their only competitive win they had the whole season. So – there was some kind of pushback on where Ohio State was going into the playoff. So for them to to play Georgia the way they did, and obviously Georgia to just absolutely destroy TCU, like and just see, like, oh wow, Ohio State may have just been like by far the <clears throat> far and away the second best team in, of mm -hmm. the in the country this year. It kind of you kind of make that jump, right? But you look at like you, I kind of compare it to Kirby Smart with with Ryan Day because it's like. 
Kirby Smart first five years, he had the one playoff appearance, like couldn't really win the SEC. You know, he's coming up second to some, you know, incredible teams like LSU and Alabama in 2019, 2020. So obviously, you know, the pressure is starting to build up. But the difference is that Kirby Smart elevated the program to what it was what it was prior to him arriving in Athens. Whereas Ryan Day, it's like he took over Urban Meyer's Ohio State that mm. was one of probably the second best program in college football when he took over. So it's for him to not be able to elevate the program from where it already is, it just it does start to feel and, and you know part of it's you know unrealistic too. It's not a little maybe a little unfair, but it's Ohio State doesn't lose to Michigan twice in a row. Like and I think <clears throat> I don't think there's necessarily as much pressure per se going into 2023 because you did lose Stroud. Like obviously Ohio State's obvi- always has those national championship expectations, but it's not like a stars aligning 2023 is our year type of thing. Mm. So I feel like if he beats Michigan, wins the Big 10, the seed is cooled down and it's fine. Like it, it doesn't necessarily have to win a game in the playoff, doesn't have to win a national championship, but it's like you win the Big 10 and you beat Michigan, it's like okay, the world is back as it should be in Columbus, Ohio kind of thing. You know, it's like it's it's not just national championship or bust. It, it just about is on the in their years where like this year where, where they were so talented and they had, you know, the, the preseason Heisman favorite potentially with C.J. Stroud. Mm. So there's different year expectations, slightly different somewhere like Ohio State year in a year out. But there's got to be something like you can't lose to Michigan a third straight year. No, and I think, like, what would your gut tell you? If he loses to Notre Dame on the road this year, they get Notre Dame on the road, which would be fun, and Michigan the same year, do you think he's gone? Oh, man. So, and then obviously doesn't win the Big Ten East. Yeah. Yeah, if if they lose both of those games, I think there's there's honestly, there's talk if they go 11-0 and and then lose to Michigan and, yeah. and miss the playoff, honestly, because of just – the psychological of what it is, I, I can't. I'm blanking on the um, the guy before Jim Tressel, but I think that's basically what he was. He was yeah. a really good coach that kept losing to Michigan, and we can't mm. we can't we can't settle for losing to Michigan. So I think um, I, I think there's a conversation to be had if just that happens, which is also unrealistic. And he probably doesn't get fired, but. You know, people people are emotional about their about their program. So if they lose to Notre Dame and Michigan, I honestly I could see it happening. But I, I don't I don't necessarily see them losing to Notre Dame either. But you know, Sam Hartman, Notre Dame's gonna, be, Notre Dame's gonna be a different looking team next year for sure. Final two, Mario Cristobal. We talked about Miami a little bit uh, at the top, so we don't have to spend a lot of time with this with that OC hire. But year two, what do you think? Do you is there enough? Oh. 